Um, okay, let's see here. Pretty cross your fingers. Can we not text me right now, please? <laughs> okay, it's, I, I think it's about to broadcast on Facebook. To any of the attendees in the Zoom webinar, thanks for your patience. We're just um, trying to get all the technology set up. It, we're, we're live on Facebook, Ali. Okay, great. Um, are we still good, Heather? Yeah. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. I would like to call the meeting to uh, the, um, sorry. I'd like to call the uh, April 16th, 2020 committee meeting with action of the North Hills Board of Education to order. We'll begin this evening with a roll call for attendance. So when I call your name, if you don't mind unmuting yourself. Um, I would appreciate it. Ms. Cozera? Here. Mr. Little? Here. Dr. Nolish? Here. Ms. Philpot? Here. Mrs. Poniatowski? Here. Um, Mrs. Reed declined to participate. Mrs. Rennebeck? Here. Mrs. Spade? Here. Mr. Witherall? Here. Dr. Manorino? Here. Dr. Williams? Here. Mr. Muth is not yet present, but we're hoping he'll be able to join us. Mrs. Pellet? Mrs. Pellet? Here. Uh, Mr. Kaufman? Here. And we have our student reps, Ms. Fleischer? Here. Ms. Shuley? Here. Mrs. Rieger? Here. And I am also, also present. present. And we have Mrs. Matthew also. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to skip over you, Mrs. Matthew. That was my Hello. Mrs. Matthew. <laughs> um, okay. Just bear with me here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for a second. Okay, so traditionally we have a moment of silence at the beginning of each board meeting and tonight I would like to request that we hold this moment of silence to honor those on the front lines of the coronavirus crisis and to mourn those that have been lost, both on a local and global scale. So I would ask that you please rise for our moment of silence and salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, the United States, States, States of America and to the Republic, the Republic of the and for which is one States. nation under God, indivisible, yeah. with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to the um, to the April sixteenth. North Hills School Board Committee meeting. Um, we're going to start with board member comments this evening. So I wanted to touch on some um, procedural adjustments and um, explain the format of this meeting a little bit versus our normal in-person meetings to start. Um, I first just wanted to note that I have two monitors going here, um, as well as 
notes on the side. So if you see me looking off to the side, it's because I'm reading the agenda items from um, my second monitor. Um, Mrs. Pellet is going to post the link to the agenda, I believe, on Facebook. Um, and you can also follow along um, at North Hills School District's website under School Board if you'd like to follow along and, and read the agenda while we're going through it. Um, in order to streamline the meeting while we adapt to the digital format, I'm going to be presenting all new business items together instead of doing the individual committee reports this evening. There will still be time allowed for board member comments and discussion of any agenda items from the board, just like in a regular meeting. Um, but in, and also in order to clarify things for the minutes for our board secretary, I will need to take a roll call vote after every motion. Um, for anybody in attendance that might be new to a board meeting, please keep in mind that the public comment time is for comments um, and generally speaking, not an open ended Q&A. So while we encourage your comments and questions, we um, will certainly listen to them, um, but we might not be able to answer them all right now. We might have to get back to you on, on some of them. Uh, and I'd also like to say that we are all getting used to this digital format. It's a little bit awkward. <laughs> um, so the meeting might run a little slower and or less smoothly than normal, and I certainly appreciate your patience. Um, lastly, I just want to say on uh, behalf of the board, we would like to thank all of the students, parents, volunteer leaders, teachers, and building and district administrators who have been challenged in new and unexpected ways during this really difficult time. None of us anticipated being in this situation when we started the school year, um, and there's no perfect playbook for how to navigate this. We're all doing the best we can, um, and the board is really proud of how the entire North Hills community is rallying in this unbelievably hard time. I know that so many of us um, are wearing multiple hats, and more and more is being required of us all, even as we probably have limited emotional resources. I know that I feel it personally. I know that others on the board and in the administration feel it as well. You know, I've said this before, um, we're all in the same storm, but in different boats. Um, but I know that we're gonna get through this. We are a very resilient community and we have every confidence that we will come out of this stronger, um, stronger than before and maybe with a new appreciation for school next year. Um, so with that being said, I wanted to see if any other board members have any comments they'd like to make this evening. If you do, please um, raise your hand virtually and I'll be happy to unmute you. Okay, seeing as there are no other board comments, um, I'd like to ask if there are any public comments on agenda items only. If there are, I will take a look over here at the attendees and you can virtually raise your hand and then I will bring you up one at a time to speak. So I'll just give you, uh, there's nobody raising their hand right now, but I will give you a minute um, in case you're trying to figure out the technology and somebody might have a comment to make. Um, it doesn't seem like anybody's raising their hand right now, and that's okay. We will also have an opportunity for public comments at the end of the meeting, if anybody would like to make them at that time. So, uh, next, I'd like to make a motion that the board approve the minutes of the March 5th, 2020 committee meeting with action and the March 20th, 2020 legislative meeting. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, we will take a roll call vote this evening. Ms. Cozera? Aye. Mr. Little? Aye. Dr. Nolish? Aye. Ms. Philpot? Aye. Mrs. Poniatowski? Aye. Mrs. Reed is not present. Mrs. Rennebeck? Aye. Mrs. Spade? Aye. And I will also vote aye on that. Next, we have Dr. Manorino with the superintendent's report. Thank you. Um, it's now been five weeks since our students were last in the classroom, and I could have never imagined that we would have to make the decision to close school uh, on March 14th. And when we did so, that plan was for two weeks. However, as we know now, that plan has to go to the remainder of the school year. There was still so much that was scheduled in the days ahead. 
and there was so much to look forward to. We had a spring musical, our spring concerts, our spring sports seasons, our field trips, our field days, and our traditional end of the year activities and celebrations. That is not how any of us wanted to spend the last few weeks and the weeks forward, and this is not how any of us wanted to end this school year. But unfortunately, this is the reality. This is the new normal. And at North Hills, we are doing a remarkable job adjusting. You are doing a remarkable job adapting to the challenges in this uncertain time. And for that, I thank each of you. Thank you to our teachers for building our virtual platform in just days and to continuing to deliver the high quality education that North Hills is accustomed to. Although the format is not traditional, the quality of education and access to the district curriculum is truly extraordinary. Thank you to our students and their families for taking virtual learning in stride and adjusting to the platform and working as hard online as you do every day in the classroom. I am proud of you and the way you have adapted in this extremely difficult time. I wanna thank my administrative team for their hard work and dedication and their countless hours that they have dedicated to this district. We would not be where we are today without your leadership and your guidance. To Dr. Williams, Mrs. Matthew, Dr. Bazilla, for supporting our staff in every way possible and ensuring a successful transition to our virtual learning and beyond. To Mrs. Pellet for keeping our families informed of our plans and responses throughout this entire crisis and for all of her communication efforts. I'd like to thank Mr. Charles and his technology team for not only springing into action and loaning more than 700 iPads to students in need, but for keeping all of us connected at a time whenever it matters the most. I'd like to thank Mrs. Radsman and our food service employees at Westview who continue to prepare food for our students every day and for our families in need. And I'd like to thank Mr. Swindell, Mrs. Friedman, and the custodial staff at Westview for ensuring that our food service operation has been able to operate in a safe environment. And last but certainly not least, thank you, Mrs. Mathis. Our team could not have accomplished all we have during this unprecedented time without your support, your leadership, and your guidance. This has been very difficult for all of us, but we are North Hills, and we will come out of this stronger than we were before. Tonight, the board will be ratifying our continuity of education plan and modified school calendar for the remainder of the school year. <clears throat> this plan was a monumental task, and I wanna thank Dr. Williams, Mrs. Matthew, Dr. Bazilla, and our building principals for working countless hours to ensure that our plan was developed in the best interest of all North Hill students and parents. Also this evening, Mr. Muth will be discussing the components of the 2020-2021 budget and the major categories that make up our district's revenues and expenses, and how we are working to produce a proposed final budget for the April 30th board meeting. Tonight, I am announcing that the North Hill School District is committed to developing a budget and delivering a zero tax increase with no teacher furloughs. We know going into this budget year that it was going to be a difficult one, and this pandemic certainly doesn't make it any easier, but we understand the impact that this crisis has placed on our community, and now is not the time to raise taxes and place any additional burdens on this community. There are a lot of pieces to our budget that are essential, but we will do more with less. We will find a way and we will be okay. You've heard us talk many times about cyber and charter school payments and their impact on the district expenses. I have commented countless times that the North Hill School District has an online program as a component of its curriculum and that our teachers and students have been engaged in online learning for over a decade. As we are working to control our costs, I believe now is the time for our state government to get serious about cyber school funding reform and to provide relief to districts like ours with an online option for students. We have proven with our learning solution during this pandemic that we are fully capable of offering online learning to any student at any time. And enrolling your students in a cyber school in this era is a private choice and should be funded by the parent making that choice, not the public school district in which they reside. We moved our entire operation online in less than one week. And I truly hope it's something our state leaders take notice of and consider when discussing cyber school funding reform. As I have already stated, the North Hill School District is committed to delivering a budget with a zero tax increase and no teacher furloughs. And at this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Muth, our Director of Finance and Operations, to discuss the components of the 2020-21 budget. Mr. Muth. You available? He's muted. Um, now he's not muted.
No? Okay. I'll do my best. You'll do great. All right. <laughs> this, I'm going to share the budget by percentages, just so that um, at this time we can really show how our budget is made up by the pieces of the puzzle as far as the expenses and the revenue is concerned. So when you look at the revenues of our budget, we receive 74% of our revenues from our local sources, which is basically local property taxes. 25% of our budget is from our state resources and the accountability block grants that we receive from our state. And we receive 1% from the federal government, which is largely Title I, Title II, and Title V funding. Our local real estates, as I kind of said, is broken down into real estate taxes, earned income tax, delinquent tax, business tax, real estate transfers, IDEA funds, interest, and other. And the one highlight I'd like to see to say in this one is interest. You can see interest is at 1%. And that was one of the things as we were building this budget that became a difficult reality is that that interest number dropped. And so too did our revenue number that comes along with uh, our revenue interest, just based upon the economic times that this entire nation is facing. When you look at our state revenues, they're divided into basic education subsidy, which is where we get the most. And we get a state matching share for retirement contributions. So when we talk about the retirement um, funding that we pay out, we do receive a bit of a uh, revenue for the PSERS retirement um, fund that we have to pay into. We receive a special education subsidy of 12%. And then there's a homestead exemption, there's a state matching share for Social Security and Medicare contributions that the district makes in payroll. And then we get a transportation subsidy, and then we get a debt service reimbursement at 2%. So you can see, again, largely our, our revenues are basically on the basic education funding and the retirement contribution. When you get to expenses, you can see that our expenses are broken into regular program instruction at 48% and special education at 12%. And so you can see right there that 60% of our budget is made up of educating our students K-12 um, in all of our programs. 9% of this budget is our debt, which is the debt on the buildings that we, um, through the renovation project. And, and I believe that we are within the last third of that debt. Those debts will be paid off within the next 10 years. We spend 8% of our budget on facilities and support services. And then there's 5% on administ administrative costs, transportation, support services. And then we pay for the vocational and other expenses. And you can see that athletics and act activities are a mere 2% of this budget. When you break it into objects, you can see that the lion's share of this, uh, of this pie is salaries, wages, and benefits. The biggest part of our expenses come out of those two categories. And you can see once you pay for the debt and then you pay for the transportation, we're down to really small numbers when you're looking at books, supplies, equipment. When we're talking about uh, what we pay for to educate students is about 5%. So the lion's share of, again, this budget is salaries and benefits. And you can see where those, um, those make up about 72% of our district's budget. We did revenues. We did revenues. Okay, here we go. Revenues again. I think that's it. Okay. That's last slide. Yep, that was it. Um, I just uh, before we move on to the business items, I just wanted to touch base really quickly on the the timeline so everybody understands. Um, the preliminary budget is going to be voted on April 30th, then it will be on display for the public for 30 days um, before we have to vote on the final version of the budget. Um, and I would just like to ask that during that display period that we are able to spool up some sort of virtual um, public budget committee. Um, I know that it's been, uh, there have been some delays this year and then we were working on one budget, coronavirus happened, had to, had to change directions, but I, I think it'd be really good to, to try to uh, keep some portion of the budget committee intact this year, if possible, the public budget committee. Yeah, so. I, I agree. Okay, um, do any other board members have questions or comments on that presentation? 
Okay, I will move on to the new business items then. Um, the items we have under new business this evening are um, first a request for the board to ratify the North Hills School District Continuity of Education Plan, which includes the revised 2019 to 2020 academic calendar, which is attached to the agenda. The Pennsylvania Department of Education strongly encourages all students to provide instruction for all students in the most appropriate and accessible ways possible while honoring Governor Wolf's guidance for aggressive social distancing. So included in the continuity of education plan are expectations for teaching and learning, assessment and grading for the remainder of the 2019 to 2020 school year, and adjusted the adjusted school calendar for the 2019 to 2020 school year. Um, and this plan was made public to the district, um, I believe it was last week. The next item is a request for the board to temporarily, temporarily suspend board policy number 213, grading procedures, due to the changes in grading requi required as a part of the continuity of education plan submitted to the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Um, under personnel, we have, uh, we're very pleased to announce that we've reached an agreement with the SEIU um, and we have the contract attached for approval for the board. Under finance, we have the general fund bills, the capital project fund bills, the food service fund bills, budget transfers, payroll for the month of March 2020 in the amount of $3,074,944.12. We have a request for the Board of Directors to reject all bids for uh, 300 calculators that were to be used in secondary schools. Um, the calculators identified in the bids were consistent with district specifications, but subsequent to the bid opening, a determination was made to not proceed with this purchase. The last item that we have under new business is a request for the board to approve plan con part K for debt, which was refinanced in October 2019. When a school district undertakes a major school construction project and seeks reimbursement from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, a process known as plan con is initiated. There are potentially 11 parts to plan con. Plan con part K is necessary when a debt refinancing occurs. In October of 2019, the district refinanced series 2010B debt obligations, and there's no negative financial impact from approving this item. I, uh, the superintendent recommends and I so move that the board approve education item one, policy item two, personnel item three, finance items four through 10. I'll second that. Can you please state your name for the record? D. Spade. Thank you, Ms. Spade. Um, is there any discussion? If any board members have any comments, please uh, wave a hand or a virtual hand. Ms. Cozera? Um, yeah, hi, this is Ms. Cozera. I just wanted to, uh, with respect to the SEIU contract, I was able to be a board representative in those negotiations. It was um, it seems like a lifetime ago, but it was a little over a month. Um, that we were able to work on that. And it was a pleasure to work with those folks. Um, I'm glad we were able to come to an agreement. And, um, and it's really, it was really nice to see, to meet some people that I hadn't met before and see how much they care about the students and keeping the district in tip top shape, um, which is definitely something we appreciate at that time, at this time and at that time. Um, you know, so I'm glad that we were able to come to an agreement. Thank you. Any other board members with comments? Okay, I will go ahead and take a roll call vote, starting with Ms. Cozera. Aye. Mr. Little? Aye. Dr. Nolish? Aye. Ms. Philpot? Aye. Mrs. Poniatowski? Aye. Mrs. Renovec? Aye. Mrs. Spade? Definitely aye. And I will also be voting um, aye, so the motion passes eight to zero.
I'll now accept any public comments on non-agenda items. So if there's anybody, I will go over here and look at the attendees panel. Um, and I'll ask again if anybody wants to virtually raise their hand um, in order to uh, be called upon to make a public comment at this time. Okay, I see that we have uh, Mrs. Reed is raising her hand. So Mrs. Reed, I am going to unmute you. Can you hear us, Mrs. Reed? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I just need to read the public participation policy really quickly. I did not do that at the beginning. So we would like to invite any resident taxpayer or employee of the North Hills School District who wishes to address the board to come forward at this time. The board does reserve the right to limit the amount of time allotted for public discussion of any particular speakers and or issues. Some of your concerns can be quickly addressed following your comments, while others may require more research and discussion. When appropriate, you are welcome to further discuss your concerns with us following this meeting, and we appreciate your interest. So if you don't mind officially stating your name and address for the record, we would uh, welcome your comments or questions. Tony Reed, 208 Oakwood Avenue, Westview. Um, I have two questions. The first one, um, Dr. Manorino, I have an eighth grader who, um, when they did schedules, they, would, they were told that in May they would have a two-week window to change some things because by then they would have hit their trimester class, et cetera, et cetera, and work with the high school counselors. Are we going to have that opportunity virtually? Yeah, we're still going to be able to do schedule changes for all of our students. At this point, it would be 8 through 11. Um, the, the schedule that they may have created in, in January or February might not be the one that matches their interests and uh, the classes that they would like to take now. So we are going to open that window up for everybody um, at some point. The principals right now are just working on the structures of the master schedule, so we're not to that point yet, but we are going to give every student an opportunity to take a look at the courses that they requested and to make changes to their schedule before we get to opening day in August. Okay, thank you. Um, and then my second question, can we just get some clarity on why we have some teachers teaching live and other teachers not at all? Hi, Mrs. Reed, it's, it's Dr. Williams. Um, just like if it's a face-to-face -face classroom, um, we allow our teachers um, to choose the method that they think is best going to reach their students. So while the standards that we ask them to teach to are the same, which are mandated by the state of Pennsylvania, we actually ask the teachers to go ahead and get to know their students and to make decisions and on the basis of the needs of their students. So you do have some teachers that are certainly providing um, videotaped lessons or recorded Zoom lessons. Some are going live for office hours and doing that. So they're taking a lot of feedback as they're navigating these challenges right now um, from both parents and obviously from students and trying to go ahead and navigate that path. So it does look a little bit different um, based on the teacher or based on what the curriculum is that they're delivering. But certainly if there's a concern there um, for your student, if, you know, for me it would be math class, um, if I needed additional math help or things such as that, you're more than welcome to still reach out to your son or daughter's um, teacher um, and explain what those needs and what those concerns are. So it does look a little bit different um, across the district right now, but they are hitting the most essential components of the curriculum um, and, and navigating this to the best of their ability. Okay, so there's no set standard. It's basically their choice. There is no set standard when we have them face to face either, other than that they hit the curriculum that we have in the state standards. We allow each teacher to use whatever instructional methodology, face-to-face -face or virtual, that they feel is best going to deliver the instruction to the students. So that option we have actually left into the teacher's hands, just like we would do if we were in face-to-face -face school as well. Hmm. Okay, is that something that, God forbid, this has to flow over to the beginning of school that we'll try to bridge that gap? Because I do think there's a big dichotomy between kids that are receiving live and kids that are receiving nothing live. Sure. So. I mean, certainly, we're, our hope is that we're not going to go down that pathway. Um, our hope is that we're going to be back to, to school face-to-face -face here in, in August and picking up right where we need to be picking up. Um, but certainly, those would be ongoing conversations. 
Um, I don't really want to say what if right now, um, but certainly if there is something that we need to take a step back and look at um, that we need to do in the best interest of kids, if we would need to move forward in the fall with virtual learning, absolutely as a district, we would take a step back and take a look at that. Absolutely. When this is all over, will you guys be taking um, a survey to see how things worked and how they didn't? I think we've been, I mean, certainly that's something that we can discuss at central administration. I know that the, the parents and the students have been giving plenty of feedback to the teachers. So again, if you have not done that already, Ms. Reed, I encourage you to reach out to the teachers. The teachers have been phenomenal um, with trying to differentiate, to be very flexible, to meet not just that student's needs, but obviously the needs of the families as well. Um, that's a part of this as well. Um, we have parents who are essential workers who are working all day long and kids are you know, being cared for at grandparents or other relatives and parents are coming home after working an entire day's worth of work and trying to, to teach kids in the evenings. So we're trying to be very, very mindful of that. Um, certainly if you have feedback now that you would like to give me, you are more than welcome to give me an email, Ms. Reed. You know that you and I have spoken before. Um, I think we have a great relationship. So if you even want to just email me and there's a time that you want me to give you a holler and give you a call, we, we can certainly talk more if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'll drop you an email. I appreciate that. But I wanted to say thank you to Dr. Manorino because I feel like you've done a fantastic job along with everyone else giving information. And as a parent, I really appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Um, I don't see anybody else with any hands up. I'm just going to give you guys a minute to raise your hand if anybody else has any comments. Does not appear that anybody else has any comments. So I would just like to announce that the next public meeting of the Board of Education is scheduled for Thursday, April 30th, 2020. We will be conducting it via Zoom at 7.15 p.m. and um, live streaming it as well. And uh, I would then move to adjourn the meeting. Thank you all very much. I'll second that. Thank you. Good night. Good night.